Hey, good evening. We've got about 15,000 people already, so we're going to jump in. Uh, hey, had to, had a call, I had to call an audible tonight. I'm not at my normal campfire location out here in the grass because it's raining so much. Uh, we're about to get a big downpour and it's already getting wet and, and, and the fire would have gone out and I would have got soaked and the camera equipment that I've got here wouldn't be working. So I had to gear up with some new gear and I, and I, and I managed to find this amazing fire pit. There's a, a guy that was, um, he's selling fire pits down on the corner of the street near my house. And uh, I, so I pulled over and I'm like, bro, I need a fire pit for my covered porch so that I can get out of the rain. And I saw this thing and this guy is a former Marine. Hoorah! And he was awesome. He built this fire pit and it, it's turned out to be like, I think my new favorite fire pit. Look at this. What I really love about it is not only is it made out of stainless steel, it's super heavy duty, but it's got God Bless America. And I'll show you the other panels. You can, you can change out the graphics. There's an American flag on the other side. There's a, um, uh, a whole We the People thing on the other side. And it's, it's, it's amazing. So it's putting out lots of heat. I love it. And uh, it allows us to still have a campfire revival tonight um, under my covered porch. So thanks for joining us. If this is one of your first times, this is uh, our personal 100-day plan. And we don't just wait for the 100-day plan of the President of the United States to, to, uh, to, to, to bring us out of trouble and into freedom. We are a government of the people, by the people, for the people. We, the people, have our own 100-day plan. And uh, it's not the only plan, but it's my plan, and it's in my backyard, and I want to do something to bring about good in our nation. And I invite you to join us, whether you're a person of faith or not a person of faith or, or a different faith than me. Uh, I, I, I think we're, we're lovers of liberty, aren't we? And we want to see uh, religious liberty, economic, financial liberty, political liberty. Uh, we, want, we want to see our children grow up into a land of freedom, not tyranny. And, and that's what we're here to talk about. And we believe that there is an essential element to this whole thing, and that is that, that God, in his goodness, has given us principles for a free and just nation for all people. And uh, we're going through a book written by a, a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Marshall Foster. It's called The American Covenant, uh, The Untold Story. Uh, before we jump into the next lesson, I want to just pray. Father, uh, we are so thankful that you love us and that you never sleep. Lord, you've never taken your hands off the wheel. You're not on a coffee break. None of 2020 or 21 has surprised you. Lord, in, in fact, you say that you ordain every one of our days, that every one of them has been planned by you, and you're working all things together for good for those who love you and who have been called according to your purpose. God, I, I think I love you. I want to love you more. I want to be a wholehearted, all-in follower of Jesus because he wasn't a religious hypocrite. He was a Jewish rabbi who understood who his Father in Heaven is. And he is the kind of person I want to be like. And so, God, I ask you to... to uh, Cause my dry bones to come alive. Cause the dry bones in this nation to come alive like we read about in your scriptures and form a great army of compassion and love and faith and courage to do what needs to be done to see a rebirth and a reforming of this country on the biblical principles that made it the greatest country in the history of of the earth. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about tonight. I want to share this, <clears throat> this next lesson with you out of the book, The American Covenant. By the way, my buddy Marshall Foster has noticed that a bunch of people want to get the book. The hardback is not really available. There's a paperback, uh, and, and he's updating it with all of the, the, the latest and he's offering an e-version of the book, which is going to be available to you really soon. But don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's coming, and uh, I'm going to be walking through this with you for the next 100 days. So this, uh, this lesson that we're talking about on today, day eight, is this. Consider the consequences if America succumbs to a 
godless socialism and communism. Just, just imagine that for a minute. Imagine if the land that was formed by the family of faith who love God and love their neighbor and, opl- and apply God's word to every sphere of their life and, and in doing that wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution as best as they could to honor God. Imagine if the United States of America succumbs to a godlessness and a secularization of our country. What would that mean, not only for the people in our country, as in our children and grandchildren, but the people in other countries? Imagine the people in, behind the bamboo curtain or in the, and the iron curtain. Imagine the people in those nations where religious liberty is illegal. If the great fountainhead and the great protector of religious liberty, the United States of America, if that fire of freedom goes out, what happens to the rest of the world who looks to us for that kind of uh, source of liberty, or at least an example of liberty and a protector of liberty, particularly religious liberty? Think of other countries where the family of faith is underground, where they're severely persecuted. That would be dire for not only us and our children, but also for men and women and children around the world. The United States of America is the one nation on earth that not only was built on godly, heavenly principles, but it's the nation that has the liberty, the freedom, the resources, the the property, and most importantly, the form of government that is capable of protecting the freedom of faith, not crushing freedom of faith. We have the form of government that that, that allows for tyranny to be checked and stopped because it's built on biblical principles, because it is empowering we the people to elect our own leaders, not be told who our leaders are going to be, but elect them and then allow us to hold them accountable so they never get out of control and, and, and get so power hungry that they turn into dictators and tyrants. We have the capability and the freedom still and the resources and property to protect freedom, not crush freedom. And so we we cannot afford for the sake of our children and the world to let that go. This is a a very interesting point that, that, that Dr. Foster brings out in his book. He says, many of our missionaries today go to other countries and they're embarrassed because they don't know how to answer a certain question. And one of the the telling questions about our churches today that comes to a missionary is is a question like this. If your God is so powerful to save my soul, right? They've shared the gospel with them and now they're asking the missionary, the Christian, the the person that's come from America in the church, if your God is so powerful to save my soul, is he not powerful enough to save my nation? Look at my nation, we're in poverty. We have have no political freedom. We have no economic freedom. We have no religious freedom. Can your God not save my nation? And if he's so powerful, what has he done for your nation in in, in the United States? And many missionaries don't know how to answer the question because their faith and their teaching about God's ways have been confined only to personal saving, personal freedom and liberty, not to national freedom and liberty. And this is not talking about nationalism. I'm talking about, is God powerful enough to not only stay in the small sphere of your heart, is he big enough and powerful enough to also save your marriage? The answer is yes. Many of you are living testimonies to that. So am I. Is he powerful enough to save your, your family? How about, how about your community? Can he restore and bring life to your nation? Yes. Yes, he can. But unfortunately, many people in the family of faith have never been taught this out of God's word. That's why I'm so excited about what I'm learning in this book right here. Um, The great spiritual principles of nation building that could result in a national transformation in these lands are not being imparted from God's word. But God and his word do offer liberty, not only for our, our personal lives and our homes and our family, but also from external tyranny from governments that want to shut down your faith, that want to shut you down economically, 
and destroy the, the ability for you to work for your family and destroy the ability for you to choose your leaders, good leaders of character. That's what we want. But God's word, if we apply it and we acknowledge his sovereignty, that he is in control, that's what that means, and we apply his principles to every sphere of life, we can bring freedom not only to ourselves and our homes, but to our nation. The people of the world need to know that a godless, atheist, secularist, socialist, and communist worldview cannot hold a candle to the personal transforming and nation regenerating power of God in his word, God in his ways, God in his principles, God in his gospel. Don't hold a candle to it. Isn't that exciting? That's, that's, that fires me up. And the people of God, and that's not just Americans, the, the family of faith is an international family all over Asia and Africa and Europe and North and South America and Antarctica and Australia and all the continents of the world contain the family of faith. And when the power of God is working in the hearts of God's people, it transforms their hearts. And then people with transformed hearts transform their marriages, transform their communities. Their children are blessed. And, and, and those children ra rise up and take in positions of leadership in business, in arts and entertainment, in, uh, in, in, in um, media and politics and begin to bring blessing to all people whether they share their faith or not. That's what made America so great. And that's what people need to see. And they need to see a, a, a reformation in America. They need to see a rebirth of these principles in this country that is strayed away from those principles. We're too busy looking at the new, what we think is the new shiny principles of secularism and socialism. It's not new. It's old, it's not progressive, it's regressive. Back to pagan ways before the good principles of heaven and the gospel came to bring us life and liberty out of tyranny. And we need to get back to that. And the world needs to see you and me initiating a revival. Let's not wait for somebody else to do it. Let's you and I do it. The world needs to see that. We cannot cut the gospel message. For those of you who know it, those of you who are fortunate enough to understand about who Jesus is and what it means to be a follower of Jesus and you've experienced the power of him in your heart, we must not cut, cut that power away from his ability to transform an entire nation and the entire world. We had a great awakening in this country. We also had a second great awakening. Y'all, as, as my... Brothers and sisters say in the South, we've been asleep. We need to wake up. And I believe this is what all of this chaos and, and, and everything is going on in our country is about. God waking us up from our sleep. We are on the verge of a great awakening. And I'm so excited about it. Let me read this quote to you out of the book of Isaiah, the great prophet of Isaiah. I love the prophet Isaiah. I want to end our time with, with some scripture. Isaiah 58, 12 says, and it's vital for us today. They that shall be of God, they that, that belong to, to the Almighty, will build up the old waste places. I have a friend that told me he thinks America has gone to seed. And if you know anything about gardening and farming and crops, when something goes to seed, there's no more fruit. There's no more fruit. There's no tender leaves left. It's, it's, it's gone to seed. It means it's, it's where you're ready for the winter. In America, if we've gone to seed, it's time to build up the old waste places. You will raise up the foundations of many generations. We're going to build the foundations that will be for our children and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren for many generations. And you will be called the repairer of the breach. When there's a hole in the wall... We, we're going to be the ones to repair it. The family of faith will repair the hole in the wall and protect the precious principles that have made us such a, a special nation. Not for our own benefit, 
only, but to be a shining light on a hill to shine to others so that others can see that God is good and he loves us and he has a plan for blessing. We'll be a, a repairer of the breach, the restorer of the paths to dwell in. We're going to restore the paths to dwell in. Many would like to, to, to sort of cover over the ancient paths that lead to timeless truths, not us. We're going to clear the, the, the debris. We're going to restore the paths that lead us to timeless treasures and truths that bl bring us blessing and hope and freedom. It is so good to be with you. It's so good to uh, be next to a fire. It is so good to sing and to pray. We got 23,000 people that are with us right now. I spent last, early this morning, about 4.45 this morning, answering some of your comments, praying for some of you who have friends and family members in the hospital and on hospice. I love praying for you. And I see many of you answering others with questions, and I love that. Keep it up. Build your own campfire. Gather your kids. Get your grandkids together. Let's meet every evening around this time, 5, 6 o'clock on the... On the uh, West Coast time, and, uh, and, and let's continue this 100-day plan, the American Campfire Revival. God bless you. See you tomorrow.